Hello, hello, welcome back to more Let's Play Harvest Moon! We still have about 15 more days of winter to go, so let's get going. I'm ready to get out of this dreary, dreary weather. Get out of my way, Tally. There you go, good girl. And tomorrow's gonna be cold. It was cold today, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, living in Ohio in the winter, you get used to it, so. Alright, what do I got? Utter brush thingy. We're good to go. Come here, you. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah, that's it. Good job, Claude. Get get back in there. Get back there. Ha ha. There we go. And Claude should hit maturity at, well, at, um, when spring hits. So that's good news. Almost forgot to take care of the cow odors. Mmm. Hooray. Okay. So we got some chickens to take care of, too. Which we're up to five now. How much scratch? 196. Still plenty. Still plenty to... Nothing to worry about there. Those little chickens are so cute. I love them. So I was watching a couple YouTube clips before I started recording, just to kill a couple minutes, and I was looking at who wants to be a millionaire. Some old stuff. I enjoy looking at some of those old clips. Or any recent ones, I guess, so... Last time I watched it, I was in, like, ninth grade. Let's see. One, two, three, four. And then... God, that was, like, 11 years ago. God, I'm getting old. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're good there. And this is a $500,000 question. Okay. Now, if you're listening to this, you're, you're going to be thinking, Oh, God, I wish that could have been me. Um, well, I can't really do anything with Anne. Um, question is, which of these characters is not considered a Pokemon? Yes. Not considered a Pokemon. A. Jigglypuff. B. Frodo. C. Squirtle. Or D. Pikachu. And I'm just watching this. I'm thinking, why couldn't that be for me? Why couldn't that be a random $500,000 question? Come on. Please. I could really use that $500,000. I would invest it. And... Well, I'd buy a very... Very modest house. Wouldn't wouldn't need anything special. Let's see, let's say a hundred thousand dollars. House prices in this area low, so let's say it's just a hundred thousand dollars. You know that's not bad. That leaves me four hundred thousand dollars. Let's just say this is all tax free, even though it's not, because I know it's not. That's four hundred thousand dollars. I would get a new car, a newer car. So, I would probably spend $12,000, we'll say. I'm not one for frills. So, we got that. You know, we'd have to spend some furnishing the house. Let's just say that's $8,000. So, that's $20,000. That leaves me with... How much did I spend? $380,000. Well, you know, house is paid off. You know, I have property taxes, but, you know, that's not too bad. And, you know, I don't need a lot for you know, food, me and my girlfriend, we don't really spend a whole lot on there, so that's not a big deal. So, I mean, really, out of that 380000 take 300000 of it and just let it sit, earning interest. One, two, three, four, oh, crap. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're good there. So, just let that sit, take that $300,000, and put it in... Oh, you could put it in bonds, so you're getting monthly income. And even if you're only earning, you know, 3% on that, so out of that 300000 so if you're earning average of, you know, 3% a year, well, that's, you know, that's $9,000 a year, plus then it's going to start compounding. 3% is definitely easily attainable, even now. So that's 9000 you're getting a year, plus it's going to be increasing each year. And I think that could work. Oh, yeah, we gotta go take care of Van. I ain't telling you, oh, that's not much at all. Well, yeah, but you have no car payment. You have no mortgage payment. You have, ta you know, property taxes. But if you're buying a $100,000 house, property taxes aren't going to be a whole lot of money. So you've got, you know, gas, but I'm not going to go anywhere. I have $80,000 that I haven't invested yet. You have food. You know, yeah, you have, you know, electricity and things like that, but, you know, I would be probably doing things on the side. 
you know, that $80,000, I would probably use towards, you know, having a small business that I'd like to do on the side, which is kind of what I do, you know, not really much, but, you know, trying use that towards, you know, making some money. And that's only, you know, 10000 out of 80000 we'll say we'll use. And, you know, that's not much at all. So we have $70,000 just sitting there for whatever I need. We're getting $9,000 plus each year compounding. And, you know, I'm not a frill person who really cares about frills. So really wouldn't have to be a whole lot to worry about. Plus anything that you make on the side then. There you go. How do I answer this? Ah. The English sometimes kills me. And we're at still three hearts. Alright. Let's check to see when the next holiday is coming up. What is today? 18th. And, well, we're over five... Almost to 6,000 gold, I think that said. Really kind of went through that kind of fast, but, eh. So, yeah, that $500,000 question. Sure, I probably couldn't, I probably couldn't live off it the rest of my life, but you could certainly be comfortable and not have to worry about a lot of things if you were smart about your decisions. All right. Uh, six more days. The Star Night Festival. Probably hit that next episode. So I think I would like that. And then there was a, um, oh, what, was there another question that I was looking at? Nah, I don't remember. There, I do remember one, uh, I haven't watched this in a while, so I could be wrong on the details of it. But the question is like, what does a power surge, or, or a surge protector protect from? And this is like the first question, a hundred dollar question. Answers are something like, um... I can't even remember. One's obviously now like, you know, uh, uh, you know, electricity, you know, for a power surge. One of the other answers is a flood, and the dude answers a flood for some reason. I and I was just, I'm rolling the whole time, like, really? I mean, come on. I mean, oops. Well, we'll take the milk first. Mike, you didn't know that a surge protector is not for protecting your electronics from, you know, electricity. You know, a power surge. Hmm. But, alright, whatever. That's always a fun show. It's really weird how America goes through crazes of, this is popular. I always find that interesting. Like, there's the game show craze when I was, like, in about ninth grade. There's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and, oh, God, I can't remember some of the other popular ones. So, yeah, there's the game show craze. I would name off one game. Yeah, there, there was quite a few of them, though, if you were, you know, watched them at that time. But then I remember, like, um, you have, like, the disa uh, the disaster movie craze at one time, which you had the movies, like, Deep Impact and Armageddon, which is, uh, I don't know about that movie. I remember that, too, because you kind of have that going on. Then kind of now we have kind of, like, the comic book craze, I would kind of call it. We know, we've had the dark, well, Batman, Be well, no, I wouldn't say Batman Begins. I would say the original X-Men movie is what did it, because... They finally took a comic book movie, and they were actually did a good job with it. You know, they actually kept it in a serious tone, minus Halle Berry's one using of the line later on in the movie about the frog and the electricity and all that stuff, which protects us from a flood. But so I think I think the original X Men is kind of what kicked off the whole comic book phase of movies, because then you also, then, you know, Batman Begins came out at some point. I, I don't really know when they all came out. <clears throat> so, they've been, you know, really doing, oh, trying to do comic books, you know, in a better light, which is good. You know, I'm not really a comic book buff myself. I mean, I love me some Batman, and, you know, Superman's always good too, but really need to redo a good Superman movie. The unfortunate problem with Superman is, well, he's really got kind of got no weakness. Which I understand, which was when he came, when his comics came out, you know, that was what, you know, what they wanted. You know, because they had, like, the Cold War going on and all that, you know, all that junk. So, I can understand that's what they wanted. But, 
you know, yeah, the, it is a superhero, but you kind of want your hero to have a little bit of flaw. You know, some flaws about him. You want to be able to relate to him, or her, excuse me. You know, in some way, so. That's kind of the problem with Superman. He's just too good. And if they tried to pigeonhole him with problems, you know, minus kryptonite, I don't know. How, I mean, how could, you know, how does it really work? I'd never watched uh, Smallville, was it? So I don't know how they handled that. So I, I can't answer that and say, oh, yeah, well, they did a good job there. I imagine they could try and find it, but I guess the most they could really do would be, like, social problems, you know, with, like, you know, Lois Clark, and, or wait, Lo, Lois Clark, Clark, Lois, you know, Lois Lane, excuse me. Um, you know, I guess you could have problems there, but, you know, that doesn't really come off as, to me, you know, a good, an idea for a movie. I think you got to have something stronger. I love Lux Luthor. I think, you know, he's a great villain, but... I think they could do more. I always like the villains that are as hu human as possible, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know Lex Luthor has had some crazy stuff going on, but, I mean, he's going against Superman, okay? This dude is, well, he's super. And he's just a normal freaking human being who is just so smart, so intelligent, that he's able to, you know, overcome, well, not really overcome Superman, but be at Superman's level, and I think that's, I really like that, that's why I like Lex Luthor, I think he's a great villain, um, you know, look at, like, Batman, favorite, favorite one is definitely the Joker, yeah, it does, um, and I like the old Joker, like, I liked, well, I guess all of them have, you know, really been done well, but I've always been the one who liked the original Joker that they kind of went with, the, the psychopathic killer that was amoral and kind of put um, Batman and, like, Gordon into uh, moral situations. Kind of like, well, kind of like um, Heath Ledger's Bat or Joker, which is another topic I could, I could talk about for easily a full episode. I, I loved that movie. But I remember there was a comic where... Um, the Joker kidnapped, oh, he kidnapped, uh, uh, Batgirl, um, uh, Gordon's daughter, and he, like, forced Gordon, like, under torture to watch, like, clips or something of him torturing his daughter, trying to, like, have him turn, you know, become, uh, crazy just like he was. Oh, hey, what's going on? Okay. Somehow I have a feeling they're going to give me the upgraded hammer now. I'll put it more power when I return it. Alright. Well, through your broken dwarfen English, I assume that means you will upgrade it to the final hammer. Alright. But in the end, then, Gordon doesn't end up giving into that and he still wants to catch the Joker, you know, by the books, which is you know, what he's trying to do. And yeah, I loved uh, The Dark Knight. Great movie. The whole movie is just one ethical dilemma after another. It starts, we're on, dang it. It starts with um, the clowns in the beginning of the movie with the robbery heist and they have no problems whatsoever killing each other. And then it comes to the scene later where when he kills Gamble, when he takes over the crime syndicate and he um, breaks the pool stick and puts it in front of those three people and says, you know, you know, he doesn't say it, but, you know, obviously somebody, they have to kill each other so one survives so they can join them. Um, it's not shown, but, it, you know, you can kind of tell from the faces like, shit, you know, we, we gotta do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna kill each other. So, you know, but you can tell they're, they're still hesitant about it. And what, what happens after that? Hmm. Well, then, he, that's when he starts being able to kill people, I think, for... Yeah, for the uh, crime, for the mafia, then. So, you know, he starts killing, you know, the, kills the fake Batman person. And, you know, that starts putting a great deal of pressure on the Batman, obviously. And what happened? Ah. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's when they and then he shows up at um, the party. Then afterwards, I'd have to watch the movie to go over it in detail or or look at it again. What is today? Saturday. Oh, seven thousand gold. We're almost there. Probably hit that pretty shortly. A couple episodes. But then it kind of really hits the hay. Um, you know, when he meets Batman and they talk about their, you know, ethical point of views, you know, Batman is, you know, there are, yes, there are, you know, evil people in Gotham. There are, you know, citizens who are bad, but the majority of them are not, you know, which is what he says, you know, you know, there's plenty of people in this town ready to believe in good, which he says at the end. And then, um, oh, hey, Anne. Pudding maker, all right. All right. Ow, why did it blow up on me right there? Yeah, that was great. So, well, where was I? I kind of lost my train of thought, but that's something I'll probably talk about a little bit more next episode if I think about it. I really do enjoy that movie a lot. But... If you if you've never looked at the movie that way as kind of like an ethical dilemma movie, rewatch it in that light. You know, with each scene with the Joker, or what he says, or how he puts you know the situations to people, and it, it's not very deep. You know, very deep, but it's very good. I enjoyed it. So, I want to thank you for watching this episode of Let's Play Harvest Moon. Next time, um, we might hit the next festival, and hopefully, it'll be a little bit better in Thanksgiving. Thanks for viewing.